Hi, I'm Caitlin, and welcome to video 14 of the Quick Start series for the Analog Discovery 2. In this video, we'll cover the Protocol Analyzer. The Protocol Analyzer allows you to leverage the 16 digital IOs in order to send and receive data over SPI, I2C, and UART. This is especially helpful when testing hardware that uses these protocols to communicate. You can access the Protocol Analyzer through any of the 16 digital IO pins on the Analog Discovery. Open the Protocol Analyzer by clicking Protocol in the Waveform's navigation bar. The first thing we'll do to familiarize with the Protocol Analyzer is to take a walk around the tool. In the main window, you have three main menus, File, Control, and Window. The File menu allows you to open a specific configuration of the Protocol Analyzer, save the current configuration, or close the Protocol Analyzer window. This can be especially helpful if you are working on a project and get the settings just right, but need to stop and continue later, or repeat the test at a later date. The control menu allows you to run and stop the protocol analyzer. When you want to read or write a specific piece of data, you will need to make sure the overall tool is running before you can read, write, or execute. The window menu allows you to change which waveforms tab or window you have open. The help tab contains information on all the tools, menu options, and buttons. If you ever question how something works or what it does, take a visit to the help tab. Below that, you will see whatever windows or tabs are open. If you ever want to change a window to a tab or a tab to a window, you can click on this button. The Protocol Analyzer currently supports three protocols, SPI, I2C, and UART. The settings and controls for these analyzers are located in the three tabs below the menu bar we just talked about. The first tab is the UART tab. The UART tab allows you to send, receive, and save data over UART. The first section on the UART tab, which you can toggle open and closed, is the settings section. TX allows you to set which data line data will be transmitted along. For the Analog Discovery 2, you can set this to any of the 16 digital I.O. pins. RX lets you set which data line data will be received along. For the Analog Discovery 2, you can set this to any of the 16 digital I.O. pins. Polarity selects the signal polarity. This signal polarity can either be set to standard or inverted. Bits selects the number of data bits and can be set to a value between 0 and 32 bits. Parity allows you to select the parity mode. You can choose between odd, even, mark, or high, and space or low parity modes. Stop specifies the number of stop bits. You can choose a value between 0 and 3 bits. Rate specifies the baud rate in bits per second. You can choose between 110 and 921.6 thousand bits per second in standard baud rate values. Ending selects how you would like to end the line. You can choose between nothing, carriage return, line feed, CRLF, and LFCR. In the TX section, you can type in the data you want to send and click send to transmit it over UART. If you check the auto box, the text is automatically sent. Alternatively, you can open a file and send that over UART. In the RX section, you can receive and save data. If you have TX echo checked, the data that you transmit will also be received. Received data is printed in blue, sent data is printed in green, and errors will be printed in red. If there are any unprintable characters, they will appear between braces. You can also save the data using the Save or Append buttons. The Clear button will clear all data from the RX box. The next tab is the SPI tab, which is set up similarly to the UART tab, but with more options. For now, we'll continue with the walk around. Later in this video, we'll do an example in the SPI tab. At the top of the tab is the Settings box. You can hide the settings by unchecking the box next to Settings. The select box allows you to enter which data line you are going to use as chip select. You can choose any pin that can be configured as an output. The clock box allows you to enter which data line you are going to use as the spy clock. You can choose any pin that can be configured as an output. The active dropdown allows you to select how the chip select signal is active, choosing between active high or active low. The polarity box allows you to select the polarity of the signal as either 0 or 1. The frequency box allows you to set the spy clock frequency as an entered value or dropdown. You can choose any value between 1 Hz and 50 MHz. The phase box allows you to set the phase of the signal as either 0 or 1. The next four boxes, DQ0, DQ1, DQ2, and DQ3 define the data lines. Depending on the mode that you use, these data boxes will hold different values. For example, DQ0 is used as MOSI if you are in write mode. DQ1 is used as MISO if you are reading. I'll get more into that later when I talk about mode. The first bit dropdown selects the bit transmission order as most or least significant bit first. The first word dropdown selects the word transmission order as most or least significant word first. 
The gear opens additional settings that allows you to set the initial drive of the signals. One way to use the SPY tab is with the Master tab. This is the tab that will most commonly be used. Mode allows you to select what type of SPY operation you're doing. You can do a read, write, to DQ0 and from DQ1. Read from DQ1 as master and slave out. Write to DQ1 as master out slave in. Read 0 from DQ0 and 3 wire SPY mode. Dual read, dual write, quad read or quad write. More information about the modes is available from the Help tab within Waveforms 2015. Command Bits defines how many command bits you want to send, allowing any value up to 32 bits. Command, DQ0, is where you enter the command word to be sent to DQ0 before the read or write operation. WordBird specifies the word length, which will determine how the data is displayed. Any value up to 32 bits is allowed. Words defines how many words the data will be comprised of, again, affecting how the data is displayed. Write specifies the words that are to be sent. You can input a value in binary, decimal, hexadecimal format, or import data using the open button. Read shows the words being read. The data can be saved to a binary or text file using the save or pen buttons. Another way to use the SPY tab is to use the SPY tab. SPY mode lets you decode SPY communication without serving as the master. You can set the mode to three wire, standard, dual, or quad. The checkbox next to mode lets you add command bits, and the box next to that lets you indicate the number of command bits. You can choose any value between 1 and 32. The number of data bits can be entered in the data bits field. You can enter any value between 1 and 32. Press the receive button to begin receiving data, and stop to stop the data. The broom button on the far right side of the window clears the data. The third way to use the SPY tab is to use the Custom tab. This allows you to write custom scripts to combine functions into custom SPY operations. The following functions can be used in your custom SPY script. Start activates the select signal. It will return true on success, otherwise it will return false. Stop deactivates the select signal. It will return true on success, otherwise it will return false. Read write completes a four-wire SPY data transfer, then returns the read array of words. Write completes a three or four wire spy data write and returns true on success, otherwise false. Read completes a four wire spy data read. It returns the read array of words from DQ1. Read zero completes a three wire spy data read. It returns the read array of words from DQ0. Write dual completes a spy dual write to DQ0 and one. Returns true on success, otherwise returns false. Read dual completes a dual spy data read from DQ0 and one and returns the read read array of words. Write quad completes a quad spy data write to DQ 0, 1, 2, and 3. It returns the read array of words. Read quad completes a dual spy data read from DQ 0, 1, 2, and 3, and returns the read array of words. DQ lets you specify the initial values. DIO lets you set and read digital pins. You can also access the spy settings like select and clock. Included under the Custom tab under Example are several examples scripts using PMODs. The Sensor tab allows you to write custom communication scripts with precise timing using different functions than that of the Custom tab. The functions available are as follows. Initialize is called at the beginning of the script execution. It is useful to initialize the device and storage files. Loop is called for a specified number of iterations at a specified rate. It is useful to collect, decode, and store sensor data. Finish is called at the end of the script execution. It is useful to send terminate commands to the device and summarize measurements. The sensor tab also provides several examples using PMODs and ICs under example. The final communication protocol that the protocol analyzer supports is I2C, which is available under the I2C tab. This tab is almost identical to the SPY tab. At the top of the tab is a settings section. If you want to hide settings, you can uncheck the box next to settings. SCL allows you to select which pin you want to assign the clock signal. SDA allows you to select which pin you want to assign the data signal. The drop down next to frequency allows you to select the clock signal frequency. Any value between 1 Hz and 10 MHz may be entered. Below settings are the tabs that allow different uses of the I2C protocol analyzer. The first tab allows you to complete basic communication with I2C. Address allows you to specify the 7-bit I2C address. 
sub address allows you to specify the sub address that the lead write operations can use to write before a read operation with restart. Both bytes specify the number of data bytes to read or write. The text box below write allows you to specify the bytes to be written in binary, decimal, or hexadecimal format. You can also import data from a binary file or text file using the open button. Write executes the write function. The text box below read shows the read data bytes and can be saved to binary or text file using the save or append buttons. Read executes the read function. The custom tab lets you write a custom communication script with the following functions. Clear returns true when the bus is free. It will try to resolve STA and hold down issue. Read returns true when acknowledged, otherwise false. Read with count of bytes returns the read bytes array from the specified address. Read with sub addresses returns the read bytes array from the specified device address and sub address using repeated start. Write returns true when acknowledged and otherwise false. Write with the bytes returns zero on success or negative one on address not acknowledged or the NAC byte index. DIO lets you set and read the digital pins. You can also access the other I squared C settings, such as the clock and data lines. Under example, you'll find several examples using PMODs and other ICs. The sensors tab allows you to write communication scripts to be executed at precise timing using the following functions. Initialize is called at the beginning of script execution. It is useful to initialize the device and storage files. Loop is called for a specified number of iterations and at a specified rate. It is useful to collect, decode, and store sensor data. Finish is called at the end of script execution. It is useful to send terminate commands to the device and summarize measurements. For this video, I'll demonstrate using one of our PMODs, the PMOD ALS, which is a light sensing module that converts light level into digital data with 8-bit resolution. First, I'll demonstrate how the PMOD ALS is supposed to work. I have it here connected to the BASIS-3, reading data and sending it over UART to my computer. If we look at the data, as I bring the flashlight closer to the sensor, the numbers go up. And as I cover the sensor, the numbers go all the way down to zero. Now let's say you're trying to get this project up and running, but it won't work. The first thing you might want to do is check to make sure your sensor is operating properly. This is where the protocol analyzer will come in handy. We'll need to use three digital I.O. channels for the chip select data and spy clock channels. We'll also need the positive supply to provide 3.3 volts to VCC and one ground connection, which is a black wire, to connect to ground. We can use any of the three digital I.O. channels, but I'll use DIO0, 1, and 2 to connect to chip select SD0 and S clock respectively for this demo. Open the protocol analyzer by clicking on protocol. Since we're using a SPI PMOD, we'll then open the SPI tab. We can leave select at DIO0 and change the clock to DIO2. From the datasheet for the PMOD ALS, we can see that the clock needs to be between 1 MHz and 4 MHz. We could choose any value in that range, but today I'll just set the frequency to 2 MHz. Since the protocol analyzer is so versatile, there are four data channels to use. We can find out more on how to use those by visiting the Help tab. Since we're using a SPI PMOD and performing a read only, we need to use DQ1 as MISO. We'll need to connect DIO1 to DQ1. The active, polarity, phase, first bit, and first word settings already reflect the information in the PMOD ALS datasheet, so we don't need to change those. Their presets are exactly what they need to be for this demo. Since we only need to read and not write, let's change the mode under the simple tab to read. Then we select 11 word bits and one word. Now if we click Execute, we can read the data from the PMOD ALS. Now you know the basic functionality of the protocol analyzer. In the next video, we'll go over the script editor. Subscribe to stay up to date with Digilance products and services. Thanks for watching.